Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Uh, could you please just introduce yourself for some of our audience that might not know who you are, uh, and then I'll let you get on with your presentation. I'd be very surprised if too many of you know who I am. Um, so yeah, I'm Kevin LaPan and I, I run the Irish Petroleum Industry Association, which has now been rebranded to be Fuels for Ireland, and I'll, I'll even touch on, on, on why we've done that. So first of all, I just want to say thanks for taking the time to join the session. It's, it's a bit of a strange one for me because not only am I sitting at my desk in Dublin rather than with you all in, in Coventry, but also because I'm presenting to you a couple of weeks before we launch a very major report on the subject that I want to talk about with you today. So I hope you'll um, indulge me and forgive me for being a little bit heavy on chat and light on slides because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to give away the farm, as it were, and, and give you all of the information that's coming from coming in that report in the next few weeks. But before we get into that, I'll give you a little bit of background. So the Irish Petroleum Industry Association was formed almost 30 years ago. And for about 20 of those years, it was a bit of an old boys club, and it was old boys. Uh, it was a very convivial forum in which the masters of the oil industry in Ireland could moan to each other about tax, excise, and duties. And I'm sure share a nice meal and probably a round of golf. But more recently, the leaders of the sector here in Ireland have recognized that they needed to, to step up and face the challenges of the climate emergency and to do so in a way which delivers real greenhouse gas emission reductions while continuing to fuel Irish life. Because that's what we're about. You know, we often say we're not in the oil business. We're in the, in the getting the kids to school, keeping homes warm, allowing businesses to access export markets and getting people to go on holiday and visit their families business. That's what we're actually about. So when people express cynicism about major fuel operators' commitment to carbon neutrality by 2050, I ask them to take a step back and think about it. E even if we were to ignore our moral responsibility to act, and you know, let's not miss an opportunity to once again stress that we don't ignore our moral responsibility to act. There's a massive commercial imperative too to change the products that we bring to market and the manner in which we do so. The boards, CEOs, and shareholders of Fuel for Ireland member companies all recognize that Ireland has made a legal commitment to carbon neutrality by 2050. And yet they all still want to be in business and to make profits in 2050. And they know that this is utterly incompatible with operations based on selling diesel, petrol, and uh, kerosene. So some of you may have heard the old joke about the American who lands in Shannon Airport on the west coast of Ireland, picks up a hire car, and sets off to visit the farmhouse from which her great-great-grandfather emigrated to America many years before. And after finding herself completely lost in a boring, she meets a local farmer and asks him for directions to Ballyhornus. And he lifts his cap and rubs his forehead, scowls a little bit and replies, well, I wouldn't start from here. And if, we're to, if we were to ask directions to carbon neutrality for Ireland by 2050, we certainly wouldn't want to start from here. But this is where we are. And like the Irish American searching for her ancestral home, we're determined to get there. But to plot a route, we not only have to have a clearly identified destination, but we also need to understand where we are right now. So as things stand, 50% of all Ireland's energy needs are met by oil. That dependency is amongst the highest in Europe. Uh, and, and part of the reason for that is that we don't have uh, any nuclear power in this country. Uh, so we have a, a a far higher uh, dependence on oil than, than most other countries. So we can't simply turn off the taps. I often say that if we were to totally shut off the supply of oil right now, it's not any exaggeration to say that the results and deaths would begin before the six o'clock news started. Fire tenders and ambulances would be stuck on the side of the road, unable to reach casualties and those in peril. Emergency generators in hospitals would fall idle. Less immediately, supermarket shelves would be empty, the economy would grind to a halt, as essential staff would be unable to get to work. I could go on and on, and I frequently do, but I won't today. So we have to recognize that, that we can't just stop. It would be absurd just to stop. But equally, to carry on just as we are, that's also absurd, because we cannot hit neutrality. We cannot prevent uh, the further damage to the uh, global climate and carry on doing what we're doing. 
But what frustrates me very often is that many people seem to think that to discuss the objective is in some way to contribute to a discussion on the transition. They confuse the repeated restatement of, for example, in Ireland, the target of 1 million EVs on Irish roads or 500,000 deep retrofitted homes by 2050 as some, some way contributing to achieving those things.